So let's begin uh, by looking at uh, uh, improving cooling system efficiency uh, with regard to cooling towers. The purpose of a cooling tower is to conserve water. And as we'll be discussing along the way, cooling towers are commonly used in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems in um, data centers and, and other buildings. Uh, cooling towers are a, a means to conserve water, and, it, and they function by uh, rejecting waste heat that is removed from the building by evaporating water to the atmosphere. And this evaporation process at the cooling tower uh, removes heat by both uh, evaporative uh, cooling and by sensible heat transfer, whereby the, the water is cooled by merely coming in contact with the colder air. And in so doing, the water that uh, is cooled in the cooling tower can then be recycled back to the point of heat exchange in the cooling water system for recycle and reuse prior to discharge to drain. As we recycle and reuse water, uh, we reduce the need to withdraw fresh water supplies uh, from the, um, uh, for use in the cooling cycle, which overall improves efficiency. Now here's an example of a cooling tower. Uh, uh, this is a 200 ton cooling tower manufactured by Marley. There are many designs of cooling towers. This is just one example. But it tends to illustrate uh, the basic design uh, up on top of the cooling tower, which you can't see very well, is, uh, uh, are located fans. And these uh, large fans pull air in through the uh, evaporative media. Uh, and the water then is flows down through the media, where it comes in intimate contact with the air that flows through the, the uh, uh, media. And this provides good intimate contact between the air and water. Now, as I said, uh, cooling towers come in all different sizes and shapes and designs. Here's another Marley design. It's called a quadriflow tower. Th these are much larger. Uh, they're 550-ton towers that supply uh, cooling water to the uh, building chillers. But the design concept remains the same. Uh, we pump uh, the water up to the top of the cooling tower, where it flows down through the cooling tower fill. The fans located on top of the tower pull air in and through the cooling tower fill, where once again um, it comes into contact with the water to remove that waste heat that's being picked up uh, uh, from inside the building. Now if we look inside the cooling tower, we get a better view of the fan. Uh, we're inside the cooling tower now looking up at the fan. And these large fans pull air through the cooling tower uh, where in that process water is evaporated. And the, that water that is evaporated uh, passes into the air to increase the moisture content of the air that exits the cooling tower. In fact, the air that exits the tower is at about 100% humidity, meaning it's saturated with water. And in this process of evaporation, uh, the, the bulk of the cooling water that remains that's not evaporated is cooled. Uh, the limiting factor on this, of course, is uh, that cooling towers cannot cool water below the wet bulb temperature of the outside air. So uh, there are some limitations, but uh, in essence, by, by removing this waste heat in the cooling tower, uh, we are able to fulfill the purpose of the cooling tower, and that's to recycle the water and conserve water by sending it back to the point of heat exchange. Here's a little closer view of the cooling tower fill. Uh, once again, we're inside the cooling tower, and as you can see, the, this plastic fill is, has a, a honeycomb appearance. Uh, it's often thought of as being like uh, the corrugations in a, uh, a, a piece of cardboard and uh, the water that flows down through the fill is, is thereby broken up into thin films uh, or droplets to increase the surface area of the water so that it gives um, maximum exposure of the water to the air as it flows through the cooling tower. And this, in turn, improves uh, the overall efficiency of the cooling tower. In this case, latent heat is removed by evaporation, whereas the sensible heat 
is removed by direct contact between the cold air and the warm water. So in colder areas of the country, that cold air has a big impact on the performance of the cooling tower. And not all of the cooling there by acetate placed by evaporation. So what do you need to know about cooling towers? Well, first and foremost, the purpose of a cooling tower is to conserve water. And they, these cooling towers fulfill their purpose by rejecting waste heat to the atmosphere by both evaporative and sensible cooling. And we need to understand that the cooling tower must be kept clean to maintain optimum efficiency for both uh, the flow of water and air through the cooling tower so we get good intimate contact and mixing between the air and water. <clears throat> 